What's going on out there, Spotlight Faithful? Happy Monday morning to you. Hope you're doing well. Hope you had a very, very good weekend. Welcome to today's edition of the Wrestling Drive right here on the DailySpotlight.com and on the official Daily Spotlight YouTube channel. Last night, WWE presented the Battleground pay-per-view, and it was a really, really strong show. Uh, before we get into it, I do want to throw out a little apology for not having the Battleground predictions up here on the YouTube page. I apologize for that. I had the Wrestling Drive filmed and ready to go and up there and from Pennsylvania. Uh, but unfortunately, I was in PA for the weekend off at the Poconos for a bachelor party and there was just very little Wi-Fi and I was unable to get the video up and loaded. But we're here now. We're here for a big, long week. We have Battlegrounds last night, Raw tonight, SmackDown tomorrow, NXT and CWC on Wednesday. It's the first four straight WWE show nights and uh, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, last night's WWE Battleground emanated live from Washington, D.C., the home of the Washington Nats. How you doing? And uh, we, I thought it was a great show. I thought it was far and away the best Battleground pay-per-view they've ever done. Battleground typically gets a bit of a bad rap, and I thought that they did a, a really good job with last night's show. Top to bottom, I didn't think there was anything on the show that was bad. Um, let's just kind of break through the entire card and start to finish, and we'll do the best that we can with that while also uh, being mindful of your time. So they started with the uh, pre-show match. I want to touch on this just because uh, Brizongo is getting better and better and better. They got an unbelievable reaction from the crowd. People seem to be starting to get into them. And I don't know if it's because of the Usos' affiliation with Roman Reigns for a while, but it seems like people are going a little, uh, kind of going against the Usos a bit. So it'll be interesting to see where they go with the Usos from here. But I was really happy to see that uh, Tyler Breeze and Fandango are getting the spot here, getting a good chance to kind of see what they got. And I'm sure they look like they're going to be a bit of an integral part of the SmackDown Tag Team Division moving forward. So that was good to see. Obviously on the main show, it was really cool to see Bailey debut uh, to kick off the show there. Especially you had Sasha Banks who was hearing all the Bailey chants and then she started to very, get very excited and seemed genuinely moved that Bailey was able to... Uh, come up, and it does seem like she'll be back down in NXT, and obviously through TakeOver, but, uh, you know, she'll be back up sooner rather than later. It was good to see her brought up at least to quell some of the craziness about her not getting drafted, and to kind of dissolve that a bit, so it's obvious they want Bailey to move forward, and want Bailey to, they have big plans for Bailey. That was nice to see her kind of come up. Uh, I think she put on her Twitter the Boss and Hug Connection, which was very funny, and uh, it looked like she was genuinely moved to get the opportunity to come up and, and have a match on the show, so good for Bailey, long overdue, happy to see her get that spot, uh, and a pretty good match uh, in their own right, and it'll be interesting now, obviously, we're going to move towards Sasha and Charlotte, I don't know if that match will be closing the show at SummerSlam, but that is a rumor, and I think it would be something pretty cool, so we'll see how that goes from there. Uh, next up, Rusev and Zack Ryder. Uh, looks like they did. First off, Zack Ryder coming out in the Sting Great American Bash 1992 uh, gear was pretty darn cool. And it's, it's funny because you know that Ryder's a big fan of uh, WWE and WCW wrestling history overall. And so it was cool to see him kind of sport that. Rusev go out, won the match here. It was great because I think Rusev's doing a great job. I did call the Mojo Raleigh run and got nothing but eye rolls from the people I was with. But then when he actually came out, everyone kind of got a big kick out of it. So... Uh, good to see Mojo up. I don't expect this to go much further. It didn't look like Rusev was all that uh, enthused with what was going on, and they're on different shows, so I can only assume this just means that the Hype Brothers will be back and on the SmackDown brand, which makes sense because they are lacking tag teams on the SmackDown brand, so good to have Mojo. And the Riders had a couple of wins under his belt now, so I think the team automatically has a bit of legitimacy. And I did call. They'd have big plans for old Rojo, uh, Mojo, though, and don't be too shocked if somewhere down the line you have the Hype Brothers in a tag match with Rob Gronkowski in their corner. Uh, I think it's going to happen, so we'll see. Uh, in any event, the rest of the show, some of the other highlights of the show. I saw Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, holy crap. I mean, what else can you say? These guys are just phenomenal. It's a shame that is the final battle between the two of them, because they are just awesome. Hearing rumors of a Loser Leaves Raw match at SummerSlam, I think that would be really cool, but seems like yesterday was the blow-off. Good for Sami Zayn to finally get that big win, and uh, it, was, it was awesome to see. Just a stellar match, match of the night. Uh, one of the top matches of the year. Right up there with Nakamura versus Zayn. Right up there with Cena and AJ Styles. All, all the good ones. This one is right up there with all of them. Um, from there, I thought the Wyatts and the 
new day. Really good stuff. Xavier Woods last night was on fire, getting the whole crowd behind him. The crowd loved the hell out of this guy. And that whole story of him being scared, but then getting up and being ready to just throw down with the Wyatt was awesome. And even though the uh, the New Day lost the match, I think that's fine because now Bray Wyatt looks over and does his own thing. You needed Bray Wyatt to get a big win because he's going to be a big player on SmackDown, at least you think. And uh, the New Day still have the tag team titles for the longest reigning uh, the longest reigning tag title run since uh, Demolition, I think, at this point because they've now they've surpassed Kendrick and London. So good for them, and uh, obviously a very exciting group, and uh, they continue to be a major focus of the show and should be. Uh, from there, I thought uh, Enzo Amore was one of the MVPs of this entire show. This guy's promo was unbelievable, and I'm not going to lie here. Even though he gets a lot of praise for his promo work, the guy's a hell of a worker. He hit him. He hit a, a pitch perfect. Uh, I think it was like a jumping DDT or something like that. Oh, it was awesome. Right on the outside. He is really, really good. I think. He, I hope that they see what they have in Enzo Amore, because Cass is great. Cass, you know, good for him. He's going to do very well for himself. I do see that he can be something in the future. As we go under a tunnel here, and you hear nothing but loudness, banging, and a whole bunch of silliness from, I don't even know what, under a bridge, so apologize for that. But yeah, Enzo was awesome yesterday with his promo, and really, John Cena was one of the top, top dogs yesterday on this show. He did so much to try to get people over, whether it be standing there in awe of Enzo Amore or really rooting on Dean Ambrose and then putting Dean Ambrose over at the end of the night with a big hug and an arm raise. and He, he was awesome, and it's great to see Cena embracing his role kind of as that, that top guy, but a top guy slash veteran designed to kind of get others over, it. and it was uh, really nice to see. Enzo's promo was top-notch, and then the six-man match was all over the place. Really, really good stuff. AJ Styles does take the pinfall, which some people aren't thrilled about, but it only should mean that from here we get AJ Styles and John Cena kind of in that rubber match at SummerSlam. Not sure what that means with the title of game, but we'll, we'll get there. But uh, really, really good stuff. Yeah, out of the six men, they, they, they busted ass. Um, let's see. Other stuff there, I mean, I thought the, I thought this, that the Darren Young stuff, Darren Young kind of transitioning into that crazier Bob Backlund character was cool. He's obviously not program with them is though, so it was a little strange not to see them have a definitive winner, but you still keep both of them strong, they both go off in their own separate ways, and we take it from there. I thought uh, Natty and Becky Lynch, I thought was actually pretty good. I thought it was interesting to see Natty working as a heel. She seems to be doing well with the role, and she's kind of that, oh, becoming almost in a very strange way, kind of like the old school Chris Benoit type of character, where she's no nonsense, she's a technical wrestler, she can beat your ass. At the end of the day, even if she's a heel, she can still beat you straight up with uh, submission holds and everything. So, I thought Natty did a really great job there. Uh, Randy Orton, one of the top stories of the show was Randy Orton and his big line about going to Viperville and not needing any enhancements. It certainly shocked the hell out of all of us because we assumed you would not hear anything about Brock Lesnar's recent failed suspensions, and that was kind of a dig at that. And, got a kick out of him chuckling when Jericho said, I bet you're going to be paying for that one, and he kind of said, you're probably right, uh, and it looked like he was just thrilled to be back, he was the guy I feel like who needed that nine-month break, if there was ever a reason to give someone a nine-month break, he looked great in his comeback, I expect him to be a fo focused part of the show, and people seem absolutely thrilled to have him back, so good for him, and uh, honestly, the, the Lesnar-Orton match, I think it could be really, really good, hopefully they'll figure out some stuff with Paul Heyman's contract, and he'll be back in the mix, and then uh, building towards that match at SummerSlam. Uh, and then obviously the main event, triple threat match. I'm telling you right now, last night was the night for Dean 